This is Sheriff Spotlight with the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office, highlighting the office and deputies dedicated to providing law enforcement services and maintaining the trust and support of Rockingham County citizens, all while keeping neighborhoods and communities safe. All right, thanks for joining us for our first ever podcast here from the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office. Uh, previously, uh, we've been doing a show monthly where we talk about uh, members of the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office, the services we provide, and uh, various other aspects of crime prevention tips and um, other things. But uh, now we're going to... Uh, try our hand at a podcast, and so we welcome you to our first ever broadcast. My name is Sergeant Kevin Southard. I am the Public Information Officer for the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office right here in North Carolina. In the studio with me today is our very own Sheriff Sam Page. Sheriff, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, now, we have just uh, passed Veterans Day, and uh, I know that uh, you've attended several events here in the recent days with regards to honoring our veterans. You yourself are a veteran. Thank you for your service as well, uh, uh, Air Force guy. And uh, I know that's something that we uh, uh, take very seriously here, honoring our vets um, here in Rockingham County and the services that they provide us. Right. I, 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 do, I do want to give thanks to all of our veterans, all of our men and women that have served in the military, that are serving in the military, to their families who support them back here at home when they're away. Um, you know, uh, I was recently, uh, I, was, I, was out, I was out of town, you know, during, the, during this past veterans program mm -hmm. and at the, at the Rockingham County Veterans Park, I understand they had a great attendance, great program and want to thank all the participants and the supporters of, of that program that's been going on for many years at the Rockingham County Veterans Park. Um, also, uh, last week uh, on Veterans Day, um, I want to also thank a Golden Corral of Rockingham County uh, in Reedsville area. Uh, they were hosting a veterans program where they were feeding the veterans and stuff like this. And I, I spent a few hours out there meeting some veterans, meeting some persons I didn't realize were veterans, and uh, just meeting a lot of good people and, and exchanging some old stories and stuff. So right. it, was, it was a good come together. But, uh, you know, I would always encourage people anytime, you know, a lot of times you'll see veterans that wear the hats that, that identify that they were mm -hmm. a veteran in Vietnam, Korea, World War II, and stuff like this. We're seeing less World War II veterans, too, also, true, I know. True. But I always try to tell people, you know, you need to thank them. Thank them for the service. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, because we enjoy the freedoms that we have today because of their sacrifices that they made uh, before. You're so, again, we thank right. all of our veterans and, and all of our uh, active duty members uh, that are serving now, our men and women that are serving. And, again, let's don't forget their families. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, moving on to our next topic here. Um, for those that may be tuning in for the first time or just getting to know us mm -hmm. here at the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office, getting to you, know you, Sheriff Sam Page, you're a Second Amendment guy. Um, big Second Amendment fan. Um, you know, you advocate for concealed carry permits here in Rockingham County. Mm -hmm. I believe we have a little over 8,000 right. currently. Well, we have a population, and it would just give you the perspective of the numbers, we have a population of about 92,000, and we have just under 8,000 carrying concealed permits. So. Uh, we're pushing we're pushing 10 percent of the population here in the county that that have their license to carry conceal mm -hmm. uh, I do encourage the carry conceal permits um, I'd always do say that if you do possess a firearm have a firearm uh, keep one in your home for your own protection uh, make sure that you're familiar with it make sure you're familiar with the safety aspect of it make sure you familiarize yourself and train and again remember this is that you never have enough law enforcement out there. You know, we'd like to have an officer on every or a deputy on every corner, street corner. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but in reality, you're, you, if you keep a firearm in your home to protect your family, you are the first line of defense in protecting your family. And again, just be familiar with your weapons and, and when to use and, and when not to. And, and again, like I said, is uh, but we encourage we encourage the carry concealed permits. I think it's a great program. I wish, and, and there's been a lot of conversation at the congressional level about the U.S.-wide carry authorization with, with persons that have the pistol purchase permits, mm -hmm. like in North Carolina, mm -hmm. they would be honored anywhere in the United States. Right. I would like to see our Congress move forward on those issues uh, because I don't think that when you leave your, st your state boundaries that you should give up your right to protect yourself and your family. Now let's talk about, I believe I saw something recently in the news in another state. 
uh, concerning a uh, gentleman that was armed, I believe a concealed carry permittee that was... Uh, that was uh, just recently. That yes, was just... that was confronted this, by a police officer. What, what do you do in that kind of situation? Uh, uh, well, I will tell you this, that um, persons that have the carry concealed permits are taught that when you are confronted by law enforcement, you're to identify that you, that you do have a carry concealed permit and you do have a firearm. And, and I tell people that, you know, I have no problem with that. I, I think it's yeah. wonderful. Uh, the, the criminal element, you know, they never tell me. Right. You know, right. And that's a dangerous situation. But law-abiding citizens that have the carry concealed permits that are following the law, we 100% support of what they're doing. And, and again, like I said, as you know, in North Carolina a few years ago, the law has changed that for the castle doctrine that provides protection, your, your afforded protection in your residence, your workplace, and in transit. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So we have additional protections under the Council Doctrine in North Carolina, and we thank our legislators for th thinking ahead and, and supporting your right to protect yourself. Not only your right to bear arms, but your right to protect yourself. And you hit the nail on the head. I mean, uh, you know, as long as you and I both have been doing this, I mean, we could probably count on one hand the number of actual concealed carry permittees that have been an issue when we've been out and confronted them and you know not just up front they're not the people that are, no. are, are giving you the problem the law abiding citizens it's are the uh, criminals that are hiding theirs concealing yeah. theirs it's and the, not telling you it's so. the criminal element we need to put the, we need to, we need to put the issue where the issue is at it's with the criminal offender it's mm -hmm. not the law abiding citizen that's getting his carry concealed permit that's getting his pistol purchase permit that's following the laws and stuff like this that's trying to protect himself and his families whether it be in his home his workplace or in route uh, in transit uh, the law-abiding citizen, we support them 100 percent. Absolutely. So, you know, again, pay attention. What I would say is this, is anytime there's conversation on your rights to, uh, to bear arms to protect yourself, your Second Amendment concerns, uh, pay attention to what's going on in your state legislature, wherever you, whatever state you live in, and also pay attention to what's going on in Congress. Uh, because there are persons in Congress and there are persons that are in some legislators that uh, do not support your right to bear arms. Right, right. Um, now, since you brought it up, and we want the show to be uh, packed full of information that our citizens can use and listeners can use, mm -hmm. here in North Carolina, you brought up the Castle Doctrine. Castle Doctrine kind of being the nickname for the law, uh, coming from the old saying, a man's home is his castle. That's correct. Um, the most protected place. The most protected place, correct. And uh, you had brought that up. So why don't you tell our listeners and viewers here, for those that are watching us on one of our local TV channels or on YouTube, um, what is the Castle Doctrine law of defending yourself inside your home, your car, or your workplace, as you brought up, with the use of deadly force here in North Carolina? Well, you, you, you were speaking, and the big part you were speaking about is in your home. Mm -hmm. um, you have the right to defend yourself, to protect yourself from a violent entry into your residence. And when they change that law, they put the burden back on the offender. Mm -hmm. That if a person is breaking into your home, forcibly trying to enter your home, uh, there's an inference that they had the intent to cause you bodily harm. Right. Uh, the the property, uh, the person in his residence that's trying to protect his family and himself, they do not have to retreat, and they have the right to use uh, up to daily force to protect themselves from from that violent entry into the residence. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually fielded some questions uh, yesterday at one of our community watch meetings. Some of these conversations. With uh, questions about the Castle Doctrine. And um, one thing that I will bring up, uh, one of the questions I had last night, as a matter of fact, that pertains to uh, an intruder coming inside your home, uh, not breaking into your outbuilding to steal your lawnmower. You can't just lean out the window and shoot them. That's not considered part of your home, the uh, outbuilding where your right. lawnmower is. or. I don't recommend you going out and confronting them with a firearm if they're not inside your home. You know, you are or trying to force them. Exactly. Uh, you're putting yourself in an unnecessary situation. Um, stuff can always be replaced. Call us, let us come out there and, and try to take care of the problem. Um, don't try to confront uh, an intruder on your property yourself because, I mean, you know. Well, you're hitting on kind of an officer safety conversation, too, mm -hmm. is. You know, in this day and time, like I said, there's nearly 8,000 persons having to carry concealed permits and, and most ha households having a firearm and stuff. Uh, there are a lot of people in America that are concerned about their safety on the, in their homes and, their, and around, their, around their homes. And, uh, you know, a lot of, there are some times when people call law enforcement, whether it be police department or the sheriff's office, to respond. Mm -hmm. And particularly, uh, particularly at night, um, you know, I tell, I tell my deputies regular that when you respond to somebody's house, 
and they're calling for assistance and stuff like this. When you pull up at night, definitely be well identified who you are. Cut your blue flashers on, uh, beep your horn, uh, be identified who you are whenever, whenever possible because you, you, you don't want to be in an accidental situation or somebody yeah, exactly. mistaken who you are and stuff like this for a prowler or, or somebody is trying to do them harm and stuff like this. So I always, always tell my detectives who are generally in plain clothes to have good identification uh, when you're we're doing a response. Make sure people know who you are, uh, whether you're responding to a a sh active shooter or some type of alarm in a school, whether you're responding to a residence, a business, just make sure that we make sure that we're properly identified so the public knows who we are too. Absolutely. Because there are people that are defending them, they're going to defend themselves and protect themselves and we just don't want to uh, accidentally get injured wanna, or, exactly. or worse because people didn't know who we were. Exactly. So, we're, we're, so we're trying to do better. Uh, you, mentioned some, you mentioned something about, I think you were getting ready to get into it a little bit about a traffic stop. You know, we did a video uh, the local police departments and the and sheriff's office uh, did a video about what to do if you're stopped by law enforcement, mm -hmm. and we put a video in about a year ago. And uh, Roy, I think you, I think you helped us with that video. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, if you're stopped by law enforcement, remember that. Mm -hmm. If you're stopped by him, is stop. Uh, listen, listen to what the officer has to say. Uh, if you have a complaint, complain yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But but not in comply the middle. Comply with the officer. Comply, yeah. Talk. Yeah, listen, and comply, comply. I think that's the biggest problem we're seeing around the, around the country is when there is an inter interaction with law enforcement is that the compliance conversation. Mm -hmm. And that video is on our website, yeah. RockinghamSheriff.com. You can go there and check it out for yourself. So I think it's a really good video. Uh, n now in North Carolina, a law was passed in North Carolina that when driver's ed is taught for our mm -hmm. kids, that they're also taught section on there what to do when there's a law enforcement encounter. And on a local level, I believe that video is being shown to our new drivers. It's okay. Through okay. the driver's ed. Though. And we have our school resource officers in, in, in all our high schools and stuff like this. And, and of course, you know, we encourage our resource officers to uh, to go by the, before the law was passed, to go by the uh, driver's ed classes and talk to the students about some good safe practices when you are encountering law enforcement or there's a traffic stop involved and stuff mm -hmm. like this. Um, now, I'm going to take a minute to brag on the Rockham County Sheriff's Office here for a minute, our personnel. Now, that's quite all right. Go ahead. Hey, hey, that's one of the things I love about what my job, being about? able to brag on our guys and girls here. Uh, no Shave November. Now, uh, we generally have uh, grooming standards here at the Sheriff's Office, no facial hair, that kind of thing, other than maybe a mustache or whatever. Basically, military regs for the um uh, facial hair and so on and so but forth. But during so the month of November we collect uh donations from our guys and girls and the guys can grow facial hair, uh the girls can wear their hair down and uh wear crazy nail polish and uh we take those donations and we sent them to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital this year for cancer and uh we raised eight hundred and twenty dollars wow. to send That's to St. Jude. That's uh, a good deal. Um uh, good now, calls. now you and I had talked the other day, and you have agreed to extend that for another month. Right. So tell us what we're going to do with that money, Well, how that's going to work. This, this coming month, uh, December, we're going to have what's called a very merry, hairy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what it is, is we're going to do a continuation of the No Shave November. Basically, is uh, if you want to participate in the very merry, hairy Christmas, I have to say it slowly to get that right. Uh, uh, it, it's $20, $20. And, the, and, your, and your donation will go toward our Salvation Army toy drive. Exactly. Basically what we're doing is we're raising money to buy toys for kids for, uh, to support the Salvation Army in Rockingham County, which supports the whole county, and our effort is to be able to buy toys and stuff like that. So uh, you, see, you, you potentially are going to see our deputies with some beards for another month further mm -hmm. if they choose to participate. And again, like I said, it's, you know, it's all voluntary if they want to participate. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, during the months of November, like a lot of times during the months of November, December, a lot of times we think about, like, course, we're coming up on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. next week, and you know, giving thanks for everything we have that we've been afforded, and 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 then of course, and then we go into the Christmas season. But you know, a lot of times this is the period when we think about the need of citizens and, and our kids and our families and our community. But you know, I always want to remind people is you know we do food banks year round. Exactly. And, and we work with our Salvation Army. We work with our service providers year-round because you know what? Homelessness and hunger is a year-round issue. Yeah, people don't just get hungry around the holidays. You know, we do our backpack programs with one of our, our, one of our local schools, mm -hmm. the uh, Mall Street School yes. and uh, you know, elementary. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we continue. And there are other agencies that also support 
in Rockingham County. We've got a lot of food banks now, uh, more so than we saw. You know, I, I've been working in the county for more than 30 years mm -hmm. and in law enforcement, and I've just seen it, the food bank process grow across the county. That just tells you there is a need. So again, hunger and homelessness and those issues go beyond November and December. They're year round. But we're speaking about our, our program, No Shave November. Mm -hmm. we're, we'll be winding that down here in another week and a, week and a half or so. Mm -hmm. But we'll be beginning the very merry, hairy Christmas of 2019 starting December 1. December 1. And all the proceeds that we use, the monies that we raise through our deputies and our donations will go to purchasing uh, toys for our kids for Salvation Army. So I think it's a great thing. Right. Kevin, I appreciate you. You are my coordinator. Right. And I appreciate you doing that. And I appreciate It's a pleasure our, for me to be able to uh, do that and help the citizens of Rockingham County. I'm sure that our listeners and viewers at home right now, local listeners and viewers anyway, are, they're asking themselves, well, that sounds like a great cause, that toy drive for Rockingham County, the Salvation Army. How can I help? Um, well, you can get involved by donating a toy. Yes, all you have to do, uh, and we're in Rockingham County, North Carolina, all mm -hmm. you have to do, or if you hear this broadcast, just bring it by, bring a toy by. Uh, a, a, bring a truckload of toys uh, unwrapped, by. Unwrapped toys. They have to be unwrapped, and they have to be new in the, in the box, or new toys, uh, and that's... Uh, for you know, insurance things with the Salvation Army and so on and so forth, uh, potential fire hazards for those that plug in or do or whatever. They're UL, UL approved. Exactly, yeah. they got to be UL approved and this, that, and the but other. Bring but bring those by. Bring those by here at the Sheriff's Office. You drop them off. We will take them over to the Salvation Army. We're asking that everybody make their donations by the 15th, so that gives the Salvation Army enough time to separate those out in the needy counties. And I will say this, last year in Rockingham County, uh, the Salvation Army helped 1,200 needy families wow. at Christmas. 1,200 right here in Rockford County, so and I, and I, and locally. I, and I think, uh, talking with our social services people, when we did the Penwell program, then I think we had over, 100, what, over 150 foster kids mm -hmm. that are in foster homes and stuff like this that, that probably need support too. Well, definitely need support. Uh, so uh, if you want to help out, our address, if you want to drop a toy off, is 170 uh, Highway 65. Reedsville, NC. Uh, we're, we're the sheriff's office is just to the side of the courthouse on the back side. Open and, and 24 it, hours. And we're open 24 7. There are several boxes out in the front lobby there where you can leave your toy uh, donation or donations. Um, I tell you what, if you get a truckload together, I'll come out and personally pick it up for you. But uh, if you do have a toy and you're just not able to get it by here, and but you want to make a donation, you can call our office, uh, call our non emergency line 336. 634-3232, and uh, the deputy that works that area, when they get a chance to, in between their calls and on their regular beat, they'll try to swing by your house and pick that toy up and transport it up. Here or if you, have your, if you have your toy that you want to donate with you and you see a deputy, you flag them down, we'll bring them in. Sure. It, yeah. it, I mean, so you know, we're all we over just, the place. So we, just just, wanna, we want to make sure that, that, that our children that in need in Rockingham County have something for Christmas, and we'd like to make sure that no child goes without a, without a Christmas present. That's exactly right, and, and, and the need is there. Um, well, we're, we've been talking about Christmas. Let's take a few minutes here to talk about uh, Christmas crime prevention. Um, with the holidays coming up, uh, we've got Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. Uh, a couple of things I would like to uh, point on here. You know, most everybody has kind of those uh, members of the family that, you know, kind of have been in trouble before this, that, and the other. And they may be in visiting, um, neighbors may be having people in. Um, I say that because it's so important that you as a community, you as a neighbor, report anything suspicious right away. Our goal is always to be proactive instead of reactive. Um, we would rather, you know, come by and speak with a person that may be up to no good and find out that they're not or kind of change their mind about doing anything because we're right there. If you yeah, call it, uh, if you term. call it, cause we'd rather, we'd rather come and not be anything than but not get to come after the fact, and come after the fact. Exactly. If you see something, say, say something. something and do it right away. If you see something suspicious in the morning as you're leaving for work at seven o'clock, call then don't call at five o'clock when you get back home because well, it's whatever, if there was anything going to have happened at seven o'clock, it's already over and done with by the time you get home and report it to us. So, um, so, so if you, so it won't be long. We'll start seeing Christmas lights up and Christmas decorations come up. Uh, any recommendations? If you have alarm systems, or uh, uh, camera systems, any any recommendations? Um, well, you know, definitely, I say 
a lot of people like to decorate and they'll put that tree out in the uh, you know living room with the blinds open, the curtains drawn, I mean curtains pulled open so that you, everybody can see the lights from the road and stuff like that. My recommendation is to at night before you go to bed don't just leave that on because you're essentially lighting a beacon to your house for a potential bad guy or criminal thief to come up and look inside your house see what you have. Turn those lights off, shut the blinds, shut the curtains when you go to bed or when you're not at home. Um, I also like to recommend uh, if you're going to uh, go out of town or even if you're just not going to be at home uh, during the day, night, whatever your work schedule is. Nowadays uh, at the department stores you can buy these little timers that you can plug the lights into. It's, it's on a timer for certain times of the day. They're very cheap, you know, a couple of dollars. Get several and uh, you plug those into various things in your house like a radio or a lamp or whatever in different rooms. Set those to come on at different times during the day when you're not there. It gives the impression that somebody's at home. But you also, if you have an alarm system, cut your alarm system on. Cut you your leave. alarm system on, and, absolutely. And, and, and here's, one, here's one thing we've seen recently was car break-ins. And when we say break-ins, it's not actually break. I mean, they're breaking by law, they're breaking, they're breaking in. Breaking in. But the thing about it is a lot of cars were left unlocked. Right. Please. If you have any packages, you're out shopping or stuff like this, and you're, you're out about during the Christmas season, the Thanksgiving season, during Black Friday, and when everybody gets mm -hmm. out, make sure that you put your packages in the trunk or, or cover them up where nobody can see them from the outside because a lot of times a, a, a bad guy with the intent to do bad things will drop, walk by your car and see something and maybe smash a window and stuff like this. But a lot of times what we're seeing particularly at our residences is persons, when they're home, they're not locking their cars. Lock those cars even at your home. And if you have a garage door, hey, when, you, when, you, when you're not at home, put them down. So, and you know what? Put them, I recommend put them down when you're at home. Absolutely. Okay, deny access, that access, or easy access by the criminal to check out what you have. Yeah, we call this it time, target hardening. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. It's a deterrent. It, uh, most criminals are lazy. So no, they no. don't want to go to any other, any additional, you know, effort to uh, break in or well, do anything. Kevin does our crime prevention also with the sheriff's office, and he goes out to a lot of community watch groups. But also, I was going to tell you, there, I, I won't give any names, but there are some companies that have camera systems out there that are internet linked, mm -hmm. and they're very simple. Uh, they're reasonable, and I tell you what, they've got some good camera and they got some good sound, and they will link to your smartphones. Exactly. Uh, my recommendation, if you, if you got a smartphone and you, and you want to put a little extra security around your house, uh, pop up a few of these cameras. They are not expensive at all, and I got to tell you, a lot of citizens have them today. So, as a matter of fact, I've got a note in here to do a public service announcement within our public service announcement. My PSA is to the would-be thieves. Uh, that are potentially going to, uh, thinking about stealing something here in Rockingham County, there are a lot of cameras out there. And chances are, you're going to get caught on camera. And then that image is going to come to me, and I'm going to plaster you all over the news and all over the Internet, and we're going to find out who you are. We're going okay? we, to make, we're you gonna make you famous, but not in a good way. Okay? So just think about it, and don't do it. It's that simple. Assume there's cameras everywhere, because most of the time, these days, there are. So I get, a lot, I get photographs all the time. Check out our uh, Facebook page or our Instagram, Twitter. I'm constantly sending out pictures of criminals, thieves that are caught in the act by these digital cameras. And you know, some of these, some of these, cam these companies have these recording systems, these camera systems also have the like group share where they can share it with the neighborhood mm -hmm. and they can also share it with law enforcement. So uh, the technology out there is really helping us a lot uh, but again, uh, if you can if you can afford it, they're not they're not that expensive. And, exactly, and, and they're, they're not they're, that and at they're, all. And they're good programs, but it does help us in law enforcement. Um, when you're out shopping and stuff like this, good to shop in a group. Absolutely. Uh, if you're going to your car, you see somebody suspicious, something unusual around your vehicle, walk back in, get a hold of security, and alert somebody. Don't, yeah, don't, an employee will walk out with you if you get a yeah. uh, bad feeling about something. Park under the street light if mm -hmm. you can there in a the parking lot. The closest space isn't always the best one. Uh, I always say because most of the time the cameras are mounted on those lights there at the department stores too. So And it's a well-lit area which is a deterrent mm -hmm. in and of itself. What we're trying to tell you is we're trying to tell you how to reduce victimization out here. We don't. The last thing we want to see is anybody be victimized or a victim of theft or any other assaults or anything else. Uh, anytime. Two more quick things with yeah, regards to ahead. Christmas. Uh, 
Um, this year, more than half of the gifts that are purchased are going to be online, and they're going to be delivered by UPS, FedEx, so on and so forth. Get if you cannot up. be there when the package is delivered, because there's a tracking number that comes with it, right. they've got it down to a science. Have a neighbor, ask a neighbor to take that package in with you or a family member to stop by. Um, don't leave that package sitting out on your porch because, you know, Amazon, Walmart, all the rest of the big chains and all, it all has a big marking on the box as to what it is and you're kind of advertising. So thieves are following those trucks around and they're going behind them and they're stealing those boxes. And if you do some online purchases and you use your credit card, check your credit, uh, check your credit card r reports as they come in monthly because sometimes People do hack those numbers. Uh, absolutely. Yes, and it's good to check those monthly. Absolutely. So, so and and mailboxes. Uh, and uh, mail keep an eye on each other's mailboxes because what are we sending and receiving this time of year? Gifts, cards, gifts, gifts. Uh, the cards monetary have money or gift yeah. cards in them, and so the thieves go through the mailboxes looking for. Do we have anything going up? Uh, Christmas parades. Christmas parades. Let's talk about Christmas parades here in Rockingham yeah. County. They're Where's the first one? Where's they're going to kick off this very Sunday um, what's, here. What's, in, the, what's uh, the date? It's going to be November the 24th, uh, this Sunday at 4 p.m. is the Reedsville Christmas Parade. That's Reedsville, North Carolina, uh, which is located uh, just east of Wentworth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, then the following Friday, this is Black Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving, uh, on uh, November the 29th, starting at 6.30, another evening parade, there is the Leaksville Parade in beautiful downtown Eden. Um, then... On December the 7th, which is a Saturday, the following Saturday, the Draper Christmas Parade is at 11 a.m. that morning. And the Stoneville Christmas Parade is the same day, and it starts at 5 p.m. with a Christmas tree lighting and then a, just a, a really cool parade there. Come on out and check that out. And then the following Saturday, which is the 14th, is the Wentworth Christmas Parade, which begins at 11 and the Madison Mayadan same day. Parade is same. the same day and it starts at one o'clock. So there are plenty of parades going on here in Rockingham County. Bring the kids out, bundle up, bring the kids out to check it out. It's always a good time. We'll be there. Yeah, and I, ha I happen to know for a fact that uh, Santa Claus is gonna be at every one of these. So, uh, you know, bring the kids out to check them it's out. It's a fun so. time in Rockingham County and we appreciate the opportunity. We appreciate the invitations from the different cities uh, throughout Rockingham County and the opportunity to get out and engage the public and also participate in our a annual Christmas programs and we know it's going to be all over the internet. So. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to take just a quick uh, minute uh, right before we end the show to uh, this is kind of a mark the date thing on uh, Friday, December the 20th. Our records division will be closed from 1230 to 130 and this is so that our staff there can come out and uh, participate in our, our lunch. Yeah, participate in our Christmas lunch yeah. in it. You know, uh, so that we can all get together. So, uh, so, de so, so, December twentieth, we're going to be down for one hour. One hour, twelve thirty to one thirty. It will be closed. We appreciate your uh, patience with that and your understanding. Um, you know, Christmas is about being together, and we want to celebrate it as a work family together and as well. A lot of and people, you always put on a really good spread for the uh, real, real, lunch. real quick. If you have a question about gun permits or anything or, or carry concealed permits, go to rockinghamsheriff.com, mm -hmm. and you can see the information, the dates and times that we do those permits. Absolutely, and check us out on our social media sites: Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. So until next time, I'm Kevin Southern. This is Sheriff Sam Page, and thanks for tuning in.